Thank you. Uh, so yeah, uh, pretty much as was described, I'm, I'm Madison. Uh, I work at Venture IP Australia. I am the Chief Business Development Officer. That title essentially means that I overlook the sales and marketing at Venture IP Australia. Uh, with that being said, I do uh, take part in the leadership discussions. I'm a member of the leadership team at Venture IP Australia. I have been for a number of years. And I uh, have a pretty, pretty I guess, uh, my side passion at Venture IP Australia is customer service. I really like uh, the idea of always giving the best possible customer service and finding new ways to improve it. So by running this talk, it's really just to take you through what Venture IP Australia has learned over the last five years uh, and specifically, very briefly, over the last uh, three and a half years since making the decision or two and a half years since specifically making the change to a 100% insourced uh, local team based out of Melbourne in Victoria. So pretty much today I'm going to be talking about uh, why we made the decision to bring it all in-house, what really influenced us to make that decision, which was to improve our customer service and quality of service that we provided, um, and why we focused on one major aspect of that and to improve, to go on above and beyond simply bringing it in-house, and that was our staff engagement. So I'll talk a little bit about staff engagement today and what that means and the areas of staff engagement and how that really affected our quality of service that we can provide. So unlike uh, Gail Barris's talk specifically about outsourcing um, inside Australia, when I say outsource, I mean that uh, outside of Australia to specifically, uh, you know, your, your Philippines or, or uh, India. We have experience with both um, and a little heads up, we found them to be subpar um, purely for communication issues and, and having problems with, uh, with the quality of service provided. Not necessarily for the people themselves, they were lovely people and were awesome to work with. It was simply that the uh, quality of service was, was not ideal. So our major focuses were on improving customer satisfaction, improving staff engagement, as I said, and reducing customer turnover. At the end of the day, it's all about reducing customer turnover because if we can build a customer base and we can continue to grow. So to give you a bit of an idea of why customer turnover is important, it was recently found or recently estimated pretty accurately, apparently, that in Australia, the estimated cost of customer turnover is around $122 billion. So you can already see that the cost of customer turnover just due to negative experiences with an existing service provider is pretty damn high. Uh, and certainly, I'm sure you can all appreciate if you're in a similar industry to myself, where the services that you provide are uh, integral and very, very involved in, the, in your customers' businesses and their life, uh, how they make money, essentially. I'm sure you understand that it only really takes a single cust uh, negative customer experience to burn a bridge. And especially for Venture IP Australia, <clears throat> um, when we have to deal with the customer, it's not because they want to chat, it's because something's going wrong. So if something's going wrong, <clears throat> I personally believe that we need to be giving 150% of our capabilities and we need to be showing that we are the providers that they want to stay with if anything ever goes wrong again. So as I said, customer service and quality of service is, is extremely important here. So to reiterate what I said about one negative experience, again, similar research paper also found that it was just one negative experience when it comes to an online service provider that would see somewhere around 55% of consumers on average, and I believe it gets closer to 60% when you look specifically at millennials, will go looking for another provider. I say consumers will leave because at the end of the day, if it is a significant problem and you've, made, you've exacerbated the issue, I'm sure they will leave. Uh, personal experience shows that they will. Um, it, because if they go looking for another provider and you either are a little bit more expensive or perhaps your services are starting to get a bit dated, you need to upgrade your services. Uh, if they find any other reason to move on to another provider, well, why wouldn't they? They've just experienced a negative, a neg a negative experience with you. So why not take a risk with someone else other than the, the cost of uh, moving a service, I guess. Um, so I guess the, the other part that takes this on is that when we started to look at um, 
how can we improve that single negative experience before I talk more so about the specifics of our, of our outsource team and, and how insourcing fix this. Some of the things that, that we've found have worked across a number of our businesses. And certainly some, if you go researching, some ideas that are provided for SaaS providers specifically or anybody that provides an online service is that you can introduce automation. You can also introduce regular reviews with your customers and regular reviews with your staff. The other thing is that you can also improve staff engagement. Now, one thing that we have focused heavily on is staff engagement. However, what I want to highlight out of those three points is that they cost money, which means that you really want to make sure that when you're making changes that are going to cost you money already, so that is you're going to move from an Indian support team that costs about half of an Australian support team, you need to find ways to improve the profitability of that team, the efficiency and the efficacy of that, of that team, Otherwise, you're going to be doubling up on your costs because you're going to double the cost of the team and you're then going to take another step and you're going to uh, have to introduce ways to, to further improve your consumer's quality of service, which is going to also cost you money. So one of the things that we really focused on is what is known as, sorry about that, is what is known as staff engagement. So uh, I actually found this fact when I was building a case as to why we should be focusing on staff engagement. And this was that customer, uh, sorry, employees who are disengaged in the workplace are about 51% in America. So 51% of all, all employees in America fall into the disengaged. And what that means is, is that a disengaged employee is somebody who comes in, does their nine to five with a glazed over look, and they're literally just beating the clock. They don't have any real emotional connection to those who they work with. They don't enjoy the environment that they're in. And, and they really don't feel as though what they're doing is affecting your business. So to find a, a real connection there, you, you, need to, you need to improve the environment. You need to improve the, the whole workforce. So some of the ways that, again, tie in with what I was just talking about is that you can introduce regular staff reviews as opposed to customer reviews. You can focus on staff satisfaction as opposed to focusing on KPIs. You can focus on a, in, improving a rewarding environment and also the, the tools at our staff's disposal. So these are things that we have taken, taken a hold of, I guess, and, and some things that I'll briefly sp speak about as we move forward. But I guess the, the question that I get approached with a lot when I talk about disengagement in the workplace and, and anecdotally say, hey, you really should make your workplace fun. Um, a lot of people say, well, why should we do that? You're saying to me that, okay, 51% of US employees feel disengaged. Why do I care as long as they're doing their nine to five? Well, recent studies have shown that highly engaged businesses, which are defined as a business that is made up of highly engaged employees, find that they are about 17% more productive on average. So. In this instance, you can already see that by introducing a highly engaged workforce, as opposed to an outsourced team that may be costing you a little bit less, you're already starting to see just by introducing a, a local team that work together, that are building bonds, that are building a, an environment that they enjoy and that they feel they're a part of, they're already going to inherently start to build a more effective workforce. And their, and their day to day is going to be more effective. So you can understand that obviously, by being more, more involved in their work, they're going to actually go above and beyond. They're not going to need to have a manager that's going to be standing behind them, and a manager that's going to need to be, you know, tapping their watch, hey, get off the phone, or tapping their, you know, get on the next ticket, or get on, get on uh, that, you know, get into that customer's WordPress. By, by knowing that they're having regular reviews, they're getting in noticed for their, uh, for their quality of work, they're more likely to be more productive, just on an average. So another fun fact is that, uh, especially in Australia, this is significant. Um, businesses that are highly engaged find that they see about 41% reduced absenteeism. That doesn't mean that they see 41%, like they're not getting 41% less sick days. They're just finding that they're getting re a significant reduced absenteeism about 40% of the time. So absenteeism is essentially just uh, unnecessary sick leave or unnecessary absence from the workplace. This has a bit of a rolling effect in that 
if an employee is absent and you've already got quite a tight, strung team, the team is doing the, the absolute most that they already can, they're now going to become more stressed. They're going to become disengaged. They're going to find that now they've got to do, if, you know, if you've got a team of, of say, five, one of them leaves, they've, got to, they've now got to do that extra work just because that employee is not there. Now, this is another, another factor as to why, by having that reduced absenteeism, you can run your team a little bit leaner, you can rely on them, and they can be, they'll be there for one another. You're not going to have someone that goes out on Sunday night, goes to an after party maybe, or um, something like that. Uh, you, you're not going to have them just take the next day off. They're more likely to come in and feel engaged, and they're going to have that relationship with their work, work with their coworkers, so they're less likely to just up and take the day off and ask them, I don't care what they, what, uh, what, you know, what they feel. So the final little fact there that is more of a uh, less uh, causal and more coincidental uh, relationship is that in the same research paper, they found that the businesses that were highly engaged, that they defined as highly engaged through their, through their tests, actually were about 21% more likely to have a greater profitability. So whilst I can't tell you why that would be, other than the, fact, the other two facts that I've described, you know, things like having employees that are far more engaged and are far more likely to go above and beyond, far more likely to do more, and far less likely to, uh, you know, to take unnecessary time off, there's no, there's no real reasoning for this. But as a business owner, I'm sure you can appreciate that if you can, uh, if you can make more money or be more profitable, then maybe making the move to an all-Australian team or an all-in-house team is a little more, uh, more, more reasonable when you know that you're going to be more likely to be profitable. So I'll talk about Venture IP Australia's specific situation and what we did and, and why, we, why we really got to where we were. So Venture IP Australia is one of Australia's largest domain name and web hosting providers. We're a cPanel web host. We uh, service over 150,000 customers nowadays. Uh, we have a team of just over 40 in-house now uh, with no outsourced staff. So as I mentioned, we, uh, we have relied heavily on, um, on, a, on, a, on a very strong foundation that's built around automation and ensuring that our, team, that our customers have a high quality of service at all times. So our infrastructure is very high quality. We ensure that our, that our control panels are optimal for our customers and we listen to what our customers want and need. And we, uh, we've, we've done this since, the, since day one. When Venture IP Australia was founded 10 years ago, the idea was to provide a high quality service in Australia at an affordable price. And the idea was to, to show that you didn't have to go out, out, out of Australia to get that. So just like many companies in the ICT industry, uh, Venture IP Australia went through a very rapid period of growth, about five years in. Uh, that, that saw the technical requirements of, and, and certainly customer service requirements of Venture IP Australia exponentially grow. So this forced us to make the decision, do we want to hire a number of Australians or do we want to hire outsourced? Everybody else did outsourced, so we went the same route. It was cheap, it was easy, or so we thought. So we outsourced. Uh, I believe many Many providers still do the same thing, and we introduced a tiered support strategy, which was essentially if a, co if a customer contacted us, they were put through to our Indian support team as the means of first contact. They were then escalated up on request, or if the Indian support team could not handle the response. The problem with this was the customer satisfaction very rapidly dropped <clears throat> over about an 18-month period or thereabouts, uh, and we found that Customer turnover was starting to, to grow. Customer satisfaction was at an all-time low. And we were getting a large number of customer complaints. So we had an escalation policy beyond that whereby a customer could then contact our management team. We we're finding hundreds of them coming through a month. And we just simply made we, we simply decided as a, as a team something needed to change. So when we did a market review, we found that, as I mentioned earlier, a quality of service, as in our infrastructure, the software surrounding it, the, um, our, our anti-malware, our mail servers, everything was 
was at an industry standard or above. Our pricing was on the lowest end of the industry, which meant there could be no reason other than quality of service that the customers would be leaving because we found that even uh, no matter how hard you try, some customers simply when they're a little bit angry, they don't want to tell you why they're leaving, so we didn't want to bug them too much. So <clears throat> we, we came up with two real problems that were identified. <clears throat> and the first problem was that we were having issues, as I mentioned, with our outsourced support. We did a very thorough review, found almost zero first contact resolution via emails or e-tickets. Uh, and we found that our outsource training had reached a point where it was actually easier to replace the staff member than it was to train them and to put time in to try and retrain them. Instead, we would replace them and they would continue on their way by following scripts and the, and the such. Purely because we had spent years trying to individually train outsource staff members and provide them with the resources necessary, but we found that the uh, cultural differences or the, the lack of understanding of what a customer really wanted uh, was, was just too heavily ingrained uh, and that we simply could not train that out of them, I guess. Um, and so we, we, we also um, located a, or, or identified a, a connected issue, which was our local employee engagement levels were at an all-time low. We had spent so much time attempting to train and and make better the processes surrounding an outsourced team, that our in-source team, our local team, were kind of getting stuck with the, the crap end of the stick. So they were, they were only dealing with escalations. They were only dealing with customers who were calling with a direct complaint. And they were only dealing with uh, issues that were uh, you know, very tedious, very difficult to, 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 to fix. Um, and me almost every single time a customer had to uh, a staff member had to deal with a customer, they were already 10, 15 tickets in, maybe a full day of circling on, on, the, on the help desk, and they were pretty much ready to explode. So our, car, our staff were having to deal with that end of it. So they weren't really, really happy. Um, so we thought, okay, the first goal was to bring everything back in-house. So as I've mentioned, the problem with bringing everything in-house was that <clears throat> it was going to cost a bit of money. Uh, and that we had to find ways to, to hopefully improve this. This meant that for a short period of time, our in-source staff would have to take on a lot more workload than they were used to. Fortunately, uh, spoiler, it got a lot easier <laughs> than it did harder, which was fantastic. Um, but to give you insight into that, our, over half our staff at the time, which was about 15 staff in-house um, back in late 2015, uh, were technical support staff. So we, we really needed to fix this quickly. Um, we also wanted to improve the management of staff. So as I mentioned very early on, we wanted to introduce staff satisfaction-based reviews that were happening on a regular basis. We wanted to introduce a rewarding environment. We wanted to introduce to ensure that we were hiring for the team and not just for the role. So I'll briefly mention that again later. Um, so to mitigate the cost, um, being completely forefront, uh, upfront here, because I believe that anyone that does go through an ex a similar process to this will need to do something very similar, um, and similar to some of the, 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 if you were in Adam's talk earlier today, I believe, uh, sorry, Mick Adams, what was his first name? I'm terrible with memory, sorry guys. Uh, he was talking about some of the ways that you can improve, uh, you can make money easily, five ways you can easily make money next week. Uh, one of the ones that he said was <laughs> most difficult was reevaluating the price of your services, and that was exactly one of the first things that we did. So we brought every, we began the planning to bring everything in house, and we actually uh, one of the things was to imp increase our prices for, by about twenty five percent. We also invested in a, additional dev development team members to begin automating mundane tasks that our outsource team were doing network uh, maintenance, things like this, purely because we wanted, to we wanted to improve our local staff's satisfaction and engagement. We also under underwent a retraining of the entire team, which involved more just touching up on, taking a, taking a step back and doing a review of how we interacted with customers and the mantra that we had with how we felt we should deal with problems. 
Um, and then we introduce policies to, to really improve their efficiency and, and to tighten the expectations. So the second goal was to improve their engagement levels. And as I mentioned, we needed to reduce their workloads. We used, the, t uh, the I guess, the strategies that I just mentioned. Um, we also introduced those frequent one-on-ones as well as middle management. So we found staff who were going above and beyond. We introduced them into roles where they were essentially leading their own teams. We found this not only empowered them and improved their engagement levels, it allowed them to provide direct feedback to their staff, remembering that this is on about a scale of, of eight people at the time, so we had about two teams. And as we continue to scale, we scale that out. Uh, we also improved our phone support policies because as I mentioned earlier, phone support was a little bit of a problem because it was just customers screaming in our ears for 30 minutes at a time. Uh, unfortunately, it was tied in with the improving of our customer service um, that we were able to fix that. So the results were pretty amazing. And I know that I've spoken a little bit about some of the techniques that we use and a little bit about some of the uh, things we had to do. And I've probably breezed over it so much that it sounds like we didn't really do much. But when we finally did introduce the, we pulled away the, the outsource support team. We announced the price rises. We announced the changes. We, our staff were now following a new roster. Our customer escalations, which these are the management escalations, not just escalations, these are the complaints, went from at its peak, 800, I should say, this is at the time we acquired a company uh, that didn't exactly have the greatest infrastructure and their websites got pulled apart by our anti, our uh, malware system when they got in, introduced, but I digress. Uh, it did continue to decline and eventually went down to 200 per month. Uh, I should note that these escalations at this time were purely re the result of uh, the inability of our staff to be able to fix policy-driven things such as interacting with registry bodies or fixing uh, any, other, any other issues that simply are outside the scope of support. In 2018, it's probably closer to about 50. So we, we have tr doubled our customer base since this time. And we have, well, far, far, far fewer uh, customer escalations, which is fantastic. So you can definitely see that even from a management point of view, where the cost of, uh, of our, our managers, the higher tier employees, the higher cost employees having to deal with these problems, you can already see that savings right then and there, just to, just to give, it, give you a little bit more on that profitability scale. Another thing that I have been doing for years is customer survey, surveys every year, an annual survey that gets at least 6,000 responses. I find them to be extremely um, enlightening. Customers sometimes come out with some pretty crazy things. In 2015, one of the first surveys that I performed, we had an NPS score of 13, which at the time I remember doing an air pump. I was like, yes, yes, we're awesome. 13 is amazing because anything above zero is, is, is considered good. Um, in 2018, at the beginning of the year, we actually had a 67, which is far above the industry average and essentially means that about 90% of our customers are essentially 100% happy with our quality of service. So even from a quality of service point of view, you can see that they're extremely happy. Some things that I also learned from this is that 85% uh, when we performed our 2018 uh, survey, 85% of, of our customers that responded to this survey came from another provider. So that means that 85% of our customers have heard about us through one way or another and have come to us and are still with us with the average, I think, life length um, being well, uh, the customer life cycle being something like two and a half, three years. So it's pretty high as well. Um, they've actually said that the quality of support, the fact that we're 100% Australian, and the reputation of our products are the reasons for them moving from another provider to Venture IP Australia. So this is actually, you know, this is pretty significant because we don't spend much money on marketing. So we're not trying to tell people that we are a high quality provider. We don't offer an affiliate service. Um, this has built a customer base of 85% of our customers that have heard about us through a friend or family, that have found a forum, found a recommendation, have come to us and are still with us because of the quality of service that we provide. So 
what do I recommend from, from my time going through this? And I did mention them at the very beginning. Some of the things that we have introduced very specifically within our workplace is that we have introduced a rewarding, outstanding, uh, a rewarding environment that really rewards outstanding performance. So this doesn't mean that we introduce KPIs. This means that we find communicated uh, acknowledgements from customers, from managers, from coworkers are then, are then rewarded. And that means that we actually introduce company-wide emails. So anytime anybody does anything that is going above and beyond, the entire company hears about it, which at 40 people, there's a lot of emails nowadays. Um, we introduce team meetings, which means that on a team base, our entire company works on, uh, on an agile framework. So every single team has a stand up every day where people are acknowledged, their, their quality of service is acknowledged. We then have weekly meetings for the whole company. Every Friday at 4 p.m., we do uh, a we do a, a, a I guess a, a team meeting. We have we open up the bar. We have some drinks for those who want to have a few drinks on a Friday afternoon. We do announcements. We celebrate birthdays, and we did. I, I've got five minutes, so I won't I won't explain it. But we do have a Wheel of Fortune style wheel that we introduced that has uh, a lot of prizes on it. That is a little bit, uh, you know, not everyone gets one every week, but it is, um, it's an awesome way to just improve morale and for people to look forward to the end of the week to, to really round out that week and, and be acknowledged for their going above and beyond. Um, the next is that I highly recommend uh, introducing an environment that builds solid relationships. So I've mentioned this a few times. And what I mean by that is essentially find ways to focus on teamwork find ways to introduce peer reviews and, and to have coworkers working with one another as opposed to a direct tiered management style where you feel as though you're always waiting for your, you know, for your manager to tell you, did you meet your KPIs? Um, alternatively, you know, you could look at the, uh, the, the stats, the one that I didn't quote, uh, uh, I think it was that staff who have uh, relationships in the office, that's not, not uh, as in friendships, or people that feel that their coworkers are their friends are far less likely to, uh, to, to leave the company, about 45% less likely to turn over. So that means that they're gonna hang around. Um, they've got a higher satisfaction and higher engagement as I've hopefully explained a little bit in this talk. And overall, they're more, they're more satisfied in their daily work because they're working with their friends. So they feel like they're coming in to, to have a good time. Finally, uh, I always recommend hiring for the team and not the role. I am heavily involved in our onboarding, our hiring and onboarding process. I'm always involved in, no matter what department we're hiring for, I sit in on the first round interview. Um, we try and have a really relaxed first round interview and make the person feel welcome. We get to know the person. I've, I think I learn more about what they like to do in their spare time than, than I do asking them specifically about the role itself. I let the, uh, the, you know, the devs or if we're hiring for, for marketing, I let the marketers, you know, we, we make sure that the first round interview is a really get to know you session. And that really does play on all the factors that I've spoken about because we've found that as we've grown to a team of 40, um, every single team is super engaged. They're so happy to be in the workplace. They have a desire to learn. They have a positive attitude and they really, I think if I, if you ask any employee in our, in our company, they would say that they, they never go home feeling like, oh my God, I've got to come back in here again tomorrow, no matter how busy it gets, because we really have tried to build an engaged workforce. So <laughs> one last rebuttal that a lot of people that I speak to um, like to bring up is chatbots and IVRs. And look, chatbots and IVRs are fantastic, but when they go out and ask people in the street, would you like to speak to an IVR to fix your issue? 39% or would you rather clean a public toilet, a dirty public toilet? 39% of respondents said that they'd rather clean a toilet. So if you really are you know, looking at ways to save money, I highly implore you if you are looking for the long term and you want to really create an, a, a loyal customer base through an engaged workforce, I do recommend looking at building a, a workforce to be, to be bragged about in the in-house. So thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Sorry for going over.